The Samsung Galaxy Fit 3 seems like a no-brainer. It has most of the functionalities of the Galaxy Watch, but at a fraction of the price. I bought this watch for the equivalent of about $65, compare that to the Galaxy Watch 6, which is about 3 to 4 times more expensive. But how does the actual performance of the Galaxy Fit 3 compare to the Galaxy Watch when it comes to health and sports tracking? Let's find out. In this video, I will systematically and scientifically test the heart rate and sleep tracking performance of the Galaxy Fit 3 and compare that to the performance of the Galaxy Watch. And I actually found some things I didn't expect. As always, I want to start with the heart rate tracking performance, which I tested on myself, but also my colleague Raphael. Let's get to it. And here you can see an overview of that performance for one of the easiest exercises for a watch to track, indoor cycling, which I tested on myself for seven sessions. Now to test the performance, I'll compare the heart rate measurements of the Galaxy Fit 3 against the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which can generally record my heart rate very accurately. Now each dot in this plot is a single heart rate measurement with on the horizontal axis, the value according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and on the vertical axis, the value according to the Galaxy Fit 3. Now the closer the points are to the blue line, the better the agreement and the more dots that there are, the darker black the color. And as you can see, the agreement is generally pretty good, both in the lower heart rate range and in the higher heart rate range, most points are on or close to the blue line at least. Though we can see that here in the medium to higher heart rate range, there are some points above the blue line. We can also see this value up here. The correlation is pretty decent. So it's 0 0.95, which is pretty good since it cannot be higher than one, though it's not perfect. So there are some watches better than this, but we'll look into the comparison with other watches in a second. Let's first look at the individual indoor cycling sessions to see why there are some points above the blue line right here. And here we have the first example interval spinning session where we actually see a pretty decent agreement between the Galaxy Fit 3 and the ECG chest strap. So along the horizontal axis we have the clock time and my heart rate is on the vertical axis with in blue green my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and in red my heart rate according to the Galaxy Fit 3. And as you can see overall the Fit 3 follows along quite well though there are these weird peaks in heart rate and I'm not sure what's going on here. So usually this was in a moment where there was a slight change in heart rate but as you can see you have these exaggerated high peaks and then it goes back to normal levels. So these are small artifacts but overall for for this ride it looks pretty good and that's generally what we see for most rides. Also this one right here looks pretty good, there's generally a pretty good agreement though again we have these weird artifacts and that's also what we see for this ride right here. So overall a pretty decent agreement with some small artifacts. Next let's compare this performance to that of other watches. This will help you get some idea if the Galaxy Fit 3 should be your top choice or if maybe you should go for another watch. By the way, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now, before showing you how this watch compares to other watches, one important thing to note is that Samsung did not officially release the Galaxy Fit 3 globally. Specifically, the US, UK and Canada seem to be excluded. Samsung says this is because they determined there wasn't a big enough market out there. However, I could also imagine that they're a bit afraid it would reduce their Galaxy Watch sales, which probably has a much larger profit margin. Still, I heard that some people in the US are able to find it on Amazon. Be careful though and check if you're able to connect the watch to your smartphone. If you have any experience, please let us know in the comments below. Okay, but back to the actual performance of the Fit 3. How does the performance of the Fit 3 compare to the Galaxy watches and many of the other watches out there? That overview is displayed right here. Now the correlation value I was talking about before is the metric I will use for this, which is displayed along the horizontal axis in this plot. We want that value to be as close to one as possible. And on the vertical axis here, I ordered the watches from worst to best. So the further to the right and the higher the device is, the better is its correlation with the reference device. And here I marked the Galaxy Fit 3 in red. And as you can see, it's doing decently. It's in the middle, maybe even upper middle class of watches. But let's zoom in a bit so we can read those labels better and see what watches it's close to. And that zoomed in view is displayed right here. So these are just the watches with a correlation of 0.9 or higher. And as you can see, the Galaxy Fit 3 is quite close to the Galaxy Watch 5 but it honestly isn't far away from the other Galaxy watches. So the Galaxy Watch 6, 6 Classic and 5 Pro. With the small distance between them, I don't think we can say with any certainty if the Fit 3 is doing better or worse than the Galaxy Watch 6 and 6 Classic. And if we look at other watches that are close, we can see for instance that the Coral Space 3 and the Whoop Strap are doing about as well, but the same also goes for instance for the Fitbit Lux and the Huawei Watch 3 and Huawei Band 8. 
and the Huawei Band 8 might actually be a competitor for the Galaxy Fit 3 since they look very similar and are also similarly priced. Some watches that are actually better are some selected Huawei watches and especially Apple watches again. But I'm guessing if you're thinking about getting the Fit 3, you're not thinking about getting an Apple watch. Since the Fit 3 won't work on an iPhone and also the other way around, Apple watches won't work on Android devices. So actually the best Android alternatives are some of these Huawei watches. Overall, the Galaxy Fit 3 seems to be doing quite well for the price, at least for indoor cycling. Even though there was this weird artifact where it showed random peaks, overall did well enough at least for cycling indoors but let's now make things more difficult and let's see how the samsung galaxy fit 3 did for running outside this is a bit more difficult because of the increased bumpiness let's take a look and an overview for running is displayed right here similar to before and as you can see it looks pretty good though there seems to be a tendency for the points to be a bit above the blue line so most are on or close to the blue line but they're a bit nudged above it especially here in the higher heart rate range we can also see that the correlation is okay but not amazing so this correlation value at 0.92 is pretty decent but there are definitely better watches out there but again let's take a look at the individual runs to see why there's again points above the blue line and this is for a different reason this time. And here you can see the results for my first run, which looks pretty good. There is some deviation, for instance, here in the beginning and also here in the middle, but overall not too bad. And also this second run looks okay though here we see some more deviation especially for this first part of the training there was a too high heart rate detected and this might be due to cadence lock which we actually see much stronger in this next running session so that's this one right here near the end it actually looks pretty good so here it detected my heart rate correctly but in the beginning it detected a bit of a too high heart rate and this was actually most likely cadence lock so i detected the frequency of my running and not the frequency of my heart and we can check that by looking at my cadence in these moments so I actually tracked my cadence using a Garmin running pod, which is displayed in orange green right here. And my heart rate is here in red. So as you can see, for instance, in this moment right here, my heart rate was 142 BPM, but my cadence was 163 SPM. And if we go back to the previous plot, we indeed see that around this time, the Galaxy Fit 3 was detecting a heart rate of around 160 BPM, which matches my cadence and not my actual heart rate. So there are definitely some signs of cadence lock also for this running session right here, but other running sessions look better like this one right here, for instance. So it's a bit of a mixed bag. But again, let's compare this performance to some of the other watches I've tested. And here we have an overview for running where we can see that the Fit 3 is somewhere in the middle, I would say. Again, it's close to another Galaxy Watch, so the Galaxy Watch 5. And if you compare it to some of the other watches out there, it's not doing bad at all. Though as we just saw, there were some issues with cadence lock. Some better devices out there are, for instance, the Pixel Watch 2, again, some Huawei watches. And actually the Huawei Watch Fit 2 is a competitor to the Galaxy Fit 3 in terms of form factor. But also the Coral Space 3 and some Apple watches are doing better than the Galaxy Fit 3. Though again, we always have to think, is this a significant difference or not? And that's a bit difficult to quantify, though I might do that in a future video. So that's actually looking okay for the Galaxy Fit 3, though we definitely see some signs of cadence lock. However, let's now make things even more difficult by looking at a much more difficult exercise for a watch to track, outdoor cycling. I tested the Galaxy Fit 3 for a total of 13 bike rides. However, first a quick side note, if you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, I'm planning to start back up with my newsletter and posting more off the cuff things on my Instagram and my YouTube Shorts channel. So if you're interested in any of those, those are linked below. Also, I'm trying to become part of the first people who receive watches to review from companies like Samsung, and they've never sent me a watch before release. If you want to help me make that happen, it would really help if you like, subscribe, and or comment. But of course, this is totally up to you. Now enough self-promotion. Let's take a look at the performance of the Galaxy Fit 3 for cycling. And for cycling outside, we see the first major issues of the Fit 3. As you can see, there are still quite some points close to or on the blue line, but there's now quite a few points away from the blue line. There are quite some above the blue line, but this deviation is kind of minor, I would say. The biggest deviation here is quite a few points below the blue line, even close to this red line. Now this red line indicates it detected half the actual heart rate, which sometimes happens when watches detect the wrong heart rate. And we can also see that the correlation is a lot lower now at 0.69, so that's not looking too good. But again, let's take a look at the individual bike rides. 
And here we have the first example bike ride I wanted to share with you. And this one looks quite decent, I would say. So there are some peaks and some dips in heart rate, and most of them were detected by the Galaxy Fit 3. But this is one of the better rides that it actually tracked. If we look at other rides like this one right here, we can see it misses some of the peaks in my heart rate, for instance, right here, but also right here and right here. This bike ride again looks a bit better, but then there's plenty of bike rides that don't look so good. Like this one right here, for instance, where for this first part of my bike ride, I missed most of the peaks in heart rate. And there are some sessions that are even a bit worse, like this one right here, for instance, where for most of the ride, it kept detecting the wrong heart rate. However, let's again look how it performed compared to other watches. And in this overview for cycling outside, we can see that the Fit 3 is somewhere in the middle of all devices. It's again close to some other Galaxy devices like the Galaxy Watch 6, the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic, but also the Galaxy Watch 5, for instance. So not doing any better or worse than those Galaxy devices, I would say. There are some quite poor watches for cycling outside, but still the Galaxy Fit 3 isn't doing great either. If you want accurate heart rate tracking during cycling, I would say you go for, for instance, the Huawei Band 8, which is doing significantly better as and again in the same form factor and price class as the Fit 3, but also the Fitbit Charge 6 is doing quite well. But also similar to before, some selected Huawei watches and Apple watches are the top performers out there. Those results are okay at best, I would say, but there are definitely issues when I use the Galaxy Fit 3 for cycling outside. For some rides, the heart rate tracking was quite good, however, for quite a few rides, it wasn't as good. But let's make things even harder, and let's take a look at one of the hardest exercises for a watch to track, weightlifting. Weightlifting is also one of those exercises that watches struggle with, but this is because there's so much tension on my arm. Let's see how it did. And here we have the overview for weightlifting. And what we see here is that in the lower heart rate range, the points tend to be on or close to the blue line. And this makes sense since this is between sets when I'm taking a rest, so there's no tension on my arm. But the moment that I do do an exercise with the tension on my arm, my heart rate is supposed to increase, which you can see along the horizontal axis here. But we can see that often the Galaxy Fit 3 detected a too low heart rate, which is why the points are below the blue line. And again, we see a mediocre correlation at 0.69. But again, let's take a look at the individual weightlifting sessions to see if this is actually what's going on. So here we have the first weightlifting session I wanted to share with you with again the Galaxy Fit 3 in red and the Polar H10 in blue green. And as you can see each time I did a set of exercises my heart rate quickly increased but many of these peaks even most of these peaks were missed by the Galaxy Fit 3. Some were detected maybe here in the beginning and here in the middle but overall most peaks are missed. And that's what we see for most weightlifting sessions. Also right here two out of all the peaks were detected. And this one maybe looks a bit better, but again, most of the peaks were not detected. So overall, it doesn't look that good for weightlifting. But again, let's compare this to the other watches out there. And here we have the overview for weightlifting, where the Fit 3 is somewhere in the middle or even poorer performing watches. It's again close to, for instance, the Galaxy Watch 5, the Galaxy Watch 6 and 6 Classic. So not a lot of difference between them and the Fit 3. But again, all of them are not doing that well, honestly, for weightlifting. As I've highlighted in previous videos, I would generally only use watches with a correlation of 0.9, preferably even 0.95 or higher for weightlifting. So then you're basically limited to some Huawei devices and Apple watches. Oh, and potentially the Pixel Watch 2 and the Fitbit Charge 6, though these are also not perfect. So for weightlifting, the Fit 3, also struggles quite a bit. Most of the peaks in my heart rate weren't detected, so overall quite a bad performance for weightlifting, or at least not a performance that I would judge as being good enough. Still overall it doesn't underperform compared to for instance the Galaxy Watch 6 or other Galaxy watches. As always, I would recommend using an ECG chest strap if you really want accurate heart rate tracking during weightlifting, however I couldn't find a way of connecting it to the Fit 3. If you have found a way, please let us know in the comments below. However, these results are all based on how the Fit 3 performed on me, and it might do differently on others, so I also asked my colleague Raphael to test it for me, let's see how it did on him. Now for spinning, Raphael actually only did a single session, and for that we have an overview right here, and as you can see this looks okay. Most points are on or close to the blue line. And again, if there is some deviation, this tends to be above the blue line. But again, overall doesn't look too bad. And here we have that individual spinning session. And as you can see, overall, this looks pretty good. Most of the peaks and dip in heart rate match between the Galaxy Fit 3 and the Polar H10. It just seems to be that the red line is in the somewhat higher heart rate range of the blue-green line. So somehow the Galaxy Fit 3 is just slightly too high sometimes. But overall, this looks pretty good, honestly. 
And for running, the results are also mostly okay, as you can see right here, with quite a good correlation at 0.93. Again, not amazing, but pretty decent. And just as background information, Rafael did four running sessions. And as you can see, especially in the higher heart rate range, most points are on or close to the blue line at least. Here in the middle heart rate range, we again see some points a bit above the blue line, but overall this looks pretty good, I would say. And looking at the first individual run of Rafael, this looks pretty good. The Fit 3 and the Polo H10 agree almost perfectly. Looking at the second run, we see a minor bit of deviation here in the beginning, but later in the run, again, it's almost perfect. And that's also more or less what we see for this run, that there are these weird peaks for the Polo H10 and then in a dip for the Galaxy Fit 3, so I'm not sure what happened here. Somehow Rafael's heart rate seems to have increased for a little bit twice, though this might actually be an artifact of the H10, it's a bit difficult to say. And looking at the final run, this is the one that shows the most deviation, where for a quite significant part of the run, the Galaxy Fit 3 detected a too high heart rate. So overall for running, Rafael's results are pretty good and there's no clear sign of cadence lock that it might be what's going on here, but it's such a minor deviation deviation that we cannot say anything with certainty. And also for Raphael, we see the first major issues for biking outside. We see a much lower correlation at 0.56. And this is mostly because of this cloud of points right here on the red line. Again, if points are close to the red line, this means that the watch detected half of the actual heart rate. If we remove these points, then overall the results aren't actually that bad. But here we really need to look at those individual cycling sessions. And looking at the individual bike rides, these mostly actually look quite good for Rafael. Now it actually enabled auto pass, so anytime he was not cycling, so waiting in front of a traffic light, it wouldn't record the heart rate, so that's why you have these big gaps here in the heart rate. But overall, the moment it was recording a heart rate, it actually looked pretty good for this ride. And this is what we see for many rides. Also this one right here doesn't look too bad, and also this one right here looks pretty decent I would say. Sometimes after the pause it had some trouble catching the correct heart rate. So overall it looked pretty good and that's also what we see for this ride right here. But there was one ride where it really struggled and that's this ride right here. So this was the case where it detected half of the actual heart rate. So for a little while here in the beginning it still looked pretty good but then all of a sudden it started detecting half of the actual heart rate and it continued doing that for the entire ride. So more or less the patterns are the same so we see a small increase right here which we also see right here and right here. But probably the signal was just too noisy and for some reason the watch decided to make it half of the actual heart rate. And if we look at the overview for weightlifting, which you can see right here, also for Rafael we can see that the Galaxy Fit 3 really struggled for this. The correlation is quite low and again especially in the higher heart rate range right here, we have many points below the blue line. And you can probably guess what we're going to see by looking at the individual weightlifting sessions. So here we have the first weightlifting session of Rafael where we see a lot of small peaks in heart rate when he actually did a set of exercises and as you can see many of these peaks aren't detected similar to what we saw for me and that's also what we see for this second weightlifting session right here some peaks are fully or even partially detected but overall in my opinion the galaxy fit 3 doesn't seem to be good enough for tracking either Raphael's heart rate or mine so for Rafael, the results are looking more or less the same as it did for me, though running might look a bit better since there were no clear signs of cadence lock for him. Overall, considering all exercises and all results, I'd give the heart rate tracking performance of the Galaxy Fit 3 around 3 out of 5 stars. It's okay for indoor cycling and running, though it did show some signs of cadence lock during running on me. During cycling it showed some major problems, and for weightlifting I would say it's more or less useless. But let's next take a look at the sleep stage tracking performance of the Galaxy Fit 3, which I tested during a total of 13 nights. To test the sleep stage tracking performance, I'll compare the Galaxy Fit 3 against the ZMAX EEG headband, which can actually measure my brain waves. This device also has its limitations, especially when it comes to detecting awake time, but it will give us a general impression of the sleep stage tracking performance of the Galaxy Fit 3. Let's take a look. And this is an overview of the sleep test results. Now on top are the sleep stages as recorded by the ZMAX EEG device, and on the left are the sleep stages as recorded by the Galaxy Fit 3. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the sleep stages according to the ZMAX was predicted as each sleep stage by the Fit 3. And if they perfectly agree, all values on the diagonal should be 100%. Now first of all we see that about 20% of what was deep sleep according to the ZMAX was also predicted as being deep sleep by the Fit 3 so that isn't very good. Most of it was actually predicted as being a light sleep instead at about 55% but also a significant percentage as a wake time and you will see that in the individual nights in a second. 
Now, the light sleep agreement was a bit better at 75%, with most confusion again being with awake time. Now, REM sleep agreement also wasn't that great at about 30%. More of what the EEG device said was REM sleep was actually being predicted as a light sleep instead by the FIT3. Now, as I said before, I won't be focusing on awake time because I do think the ZMAX detects too much of this. But what we can see is that about 40% of us awake time, according to the EEG device, was also detected as awake time by the FIT3. But let's now take a look at the individual nights to see if we can understand why deep sleep and REM sleep both show such poor agreement. And here you can see the first night I wanted to share with you. Now on top we have the sleep stages as recorded by the ZMAX EG headband with along the horizontal axis the clock time and my sleep stages on the vertical axis and on the bottom we have a similar plot but now for the Galaxy Fit 3. And in purple now right here I highlighted the deep sleep as recorded by the EEG device. And as you can see for the major segments actually this agrees pretty okay for this night. So you had one, two major segments of deep sleep and both were also detected by the Fit 3 though the duration was a bit different. But what we can also see is that for this large segment right here the Fit 3 says I was awake where in fact the EEG device said I was asleep with also some deep sleep. Now for the second night I wanted to share with you, we see more or less the same thing I would say. So I had some deep sleep right here and right here according to the EEG device. And this more or less matches with the Fit 3, so the duration is again a bit different. So it misses some deep sleep right here and here it actually detected some more deep sleep. And for this final night I wanted to share with you, we see marginal agreement between the EEG device and the Fit 3. So here in the beginning the Fit 3 said I was awake for a while, whereas the EEG device said I was asleep already. So it misses a lot of this deep sleep right here only this segment right here matches. So the Fit3 basically detected me as falling asleep too late, so only around one o'clock. So this is one explanation for why the percentages were pretty bad. And as I said, also for REM sleep, we generally have marginal agreement. So for this night right here, for instance, the EEG device detected one, two, three, four REM sleep segments, I would say. And these are somewhat detected by the Fit3. So this segment is somewhat detected. This one is more or less perfectly detected. And here also a little bit is detected, but here again, a bit is missed. So this doesn't look that great. And also for this night right here, for instance, we only have marginal agreement between the EEG device and the Fit3, though two other of three segments are again matching. Though again, as I said, the major issue is likely to fit three detecting a lot of awake moments. So here it detected me falling asleep too late. And also for this night, it likely detected a lot of awake time that wasn't really there, so right here. So overall, not looking amazing. So the sleep stage tracking performance of the Galaxy Fit 3 isn't great, even a bit bad, I would say. The deep sleep and REM sleep agreement weren't that good, and it detected quite some long awake moments when I was actually asleep, which even meant that it sometimes didn't detect correctly when I fell asleep. However, let's put these results into context, and let's compare them to the performance of many other watches out there. And that is exactly what we can see here. This graph shows an overview of the agreement of different watches with different reference devices. Along the horizontal axis we have the average agreement over the individual sleep stages and on the vertical axis we have the agreement of the worst sleep stage. Now the better the agreement the more to the top right the device is. Now this overview is slightly complicated because we use different reference devices. The devices marked in blue purple were tested against polysomnography so the gold standard in sleep stage tracking. The devices not marked in any color were tested against the Dream 2 EEG headband, my preferred reference, but Dream went bankrupt so I cannot use my devices anymore. And finally the devices marked in green were tested against the ZMAX EEG device, so the one we used in this video. And you can see the Galaxy Fit 3 right here, so it's really more towards the bottom left, which is not where the better watches are. So it's really not doing that well compared to other watches. It's actually not that far from some of the other Galaxy watches, so the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro, the Galaxy 4 Classic, the Galaxy Watch 6, they're all more or less in this area right here. Also the Samsung Galaxy Watch 6 Classic is right here. So all of them are not amongst the top performers, though somehow it seems that the Galaxy Fit 3 might even be doing a little bit worse. But we are using a different reference device in this case, so we should be aware of that. Still none of these devices right here are amongst the top performers and none are really good sleep stage trackers. Now I expect and maybe even slightly hope that they use the exact same sleep stage tracking algorithm in the Fit3 as they use for all of their other Galaxy watches. So in that sense it should be a bit better than is indicated here, 
though maybe for some reason the heart rate tracking is a bit off in the Fit3 when I'm sleeping and that's why it's having poorer performance. I cannot say with certainty. Still, we can see that there are much better devices out there, at least for me when I'm tracking my sleep stages. So as you can see, for instance, Apple Watches are really amongst the top performers. So is the Nukua app, but this isn't available everywhere. So be careful if you can actually get it. The HD Pulse 3 is also really good, but also quite expensive. And other good devices include, for instance, the Aura Ring, which some people find more comfortable than a watch, but also devices from Google slash Fitbit, which use the same algorithm most likely, are pretty good, as you can see right here. And also the Whoop Strap isn't bad at all. All of these devices right here seem to do better than the Galaxy devices, which are mostly in this area right here. Though I did test the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro for one night against polysomnography, and it didn't do too bad for that night, though that is only one night of data. Still, this is the data I have to work with, and I hope it helps you make a decision. So overall, the sleep stage tracking performance of the Samsung Galaxy Fit 3 just isn't very good, at least not on me. The Galaxy Watches in general aren't amongst the best performers when it comes to sleep stage tracking, but the Fit 3 potentially is doing even a bit worse that we would definitely need more elaborate testing to be sure. Still, my first impression in terms of sleep stage tracking isn't very good. Therefore, overall, I'd give the sleep stage tracking of the Samsung Galaxy Fit 3 1.5 out of 5 stars. Now, normally, I would next take a look at the GPS tracking performance. However, unfortunately, the Galaxy Fit 3 doesn't have built-in GPS, but it uses your phone's GPS instead, so it will do just as well as your phone at GPS tracking. So what is my overall conclusion on the Galaxy Fit 3? Is it better bang for a buck than the Galaxy Watch 6? Well, maybe I would say. It's a decent smartwatch and actually has a way better battery life than the Galaxy Watch 6. The Galaxy Watch 6 is rated at about 40 hours, whereas the Galaxy Fit 3 is rated at 13 days. However, to me at least, the Fit 3 just doesn't feel that premium. It's very similar to so many other smart bands out there, like for instance the Huawei Watch Fit 2, which is a bit more expensive, but it's far superior in terms of heart rate tracking. Of course, most other watches won't be part of the Samsung ecosystem. So if you want to stay within the Samsung Samsung ecosystem, I would personally rather buy an older Galaxy Watch like the Galaxy Watch 4 for instance instead of the Galaxy Fit 3. Honestly, recent Galaxy watches, so the 4, 5 and 6 aren't all that different and you might be able to find the 4 or even 5 for just over $100, which would be my personal preference. Now, as you saw, in general, Galaxy watches aren't the best performance in terms of both heart rate and sleep stage tracking. They're not terrible, but if you're not committed to the Samsung ecosystem, there are better choices out there, at least in my opinion. Now, of course, the test results I showed might vary from person to person, so please also check some other reviewers before making your purchase decision. If you do decide to get a Galaxy Watch, a Whoop Strap, an Aura Ring, an HD Pod 3, another device or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper, want to potentially save some money and at the same time support the channel, there are different affiliate and non-affiliate links in the description below do not cost you any extra and some even provide a discount. Now given that you watched this whole video on the Galaxy Fit 3, check out this video on the Galaxy Watch 6 or this video on my top recommendations for sports and health tracking. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.